Rick, good morning. Hey, good morning, Keith. How are you? I'm doing great, man. You know, <laughs> you know, there's a topic that, you know, you mentioned several podcasts ago that I really want to hear you expound upon and how you became interested in it and, and exactly, you know, how it is related to our lives. Then the topic was randomness. Can you touch on that? Oh, yeah. Randomness is a big, big topic. It's like an iceberg in the middle of the North Sea. It's things... It's, it's basically the way I look at it. It's like things that you don't expect happen, happen. And then we are always puzzled about why they happen. And right. we don't realize that your whole life is sort of a catalog of randomness. You know, people suffer from not seeing the role that randomness plays in their lives. I think we blame ourselves for problems that are, are really the result of bad luck or sometimes just bad genes or a bad past environment or, you know, just kind of crummy circumstances that you're caught up into. Um, and I think we tend to hold ourselves responsible for things that are really, really way beyond our control. And, and that's, a, that's a major problem because we're internalizing uh, something, an anxiety that is created by an external that you can't control. Right. So you feel anguish, you feel feelings of abandonment sometimes. Uh, you, you feel like you've been um, this, a victim of, of some sort of cruel punishment um, because of the adversity. So I think coming to terms with randomness is really, really important. And it's liberating and it's empowering. And the thing that really turned the corner for me, Keith, was the idea that if you can cope with randomness uh, and chaos, you, you can really have a, a sense of inner peace. Now, the key to it, <laughs> easier said than done, like everything we talk about on our shows. The key to coping with randomness and chaos comes down to one thing, in my view, and that's acceptance, exactly. just acceptance. So I, I always like to um, refer folks to books uh, or to other people who I think have done work in, in an area that we're talking about, and this is no exception. There's a lot of work on randomness out there, and if people are interested in and learning more about the topic, um, the best book that I've read on randomness, uh, it's written by a mathematician, and it's got a great title. It's called The Drunkard's Walk. <laughs> the Drunkard's Walk, like being drunk. The Drunkard's Walk. And that subtitled is How Randomness Rules Our Lives. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's, it, it, it's, it, he's great because he's sort of a statistician, statistician and he talks about the probability of things occurring and why we should be comfortable with things happening in a way that we don't expect. Everything from corporate success to school grades to political polls, they're all less reliable than we believe. And so when I, the takeaway from the book, when I read it was that the book was inspiring because, you know, in life, randomness is the rule. <laughs> it's the rule. It's not the exception and it shouldn't be feared. It has to be embraced. And so one of his big things is uh, the psychological illusions that cause us to misjudge the world around us, which, which, which creates this anxiety again. But he also helps set forth some tools like acceptance that we, we need to consider and focus on to make more informed decisions. So from the classroom uh, to the courtroom, uh, financial markets, um, whatever. I think uh, the author is just ter terrific. He looks at randomness, chance, and the probability effect on our daily lives. And all of that was very inspiring to me. And I took a lot from it. Drunkard's Walk, and the guy's uh, name, the author is, I, I don't know quite how to pronounce it. It's M-L-O-D-I-N-O-W, Moldenow, I think it's pronounced. Mm -hmm. Moldenow. Moldenow, The Drunkard's Walk. Awesome. Rick, man, thank you for blessing me with that. I got to put that on my list. Um, I think what you said is about the acceptance piece. I mean, isn't that the first door uh, th th through, you know, to experiencing peace and everything else is, is acceptance. And, and I really, really love this concept. Uh, and I agree with it. I think when I let go of, you know, this, this false sense of certainty uh, that I was, you know, conditioned to believe it's like you, you have how much you have control over things are certain, there's solid ground. And, and, and we've talked about this before. Uh, that caused me a lot of suffering because life hardly ever works out that way. As in one podcast, I talked about, uh, you know, that we live our lives if, if everything is absolutely certain. And then when it doesn't happen, we're upset. 
we should actually be surprised <laughs> when things actually do work out. <laughs> work it out. <laughs> we just landed. I mean, I, I mentioned this into a previous podcast, but last week I was in Tahoe, you know, and we got there and, you know, our bags went there. You know, we should have, whenever the bags show up on time <laughs> with us, we should be surprised. Whenever the plane lands, <laughs> lands, period, not even on time, <laughs> it's like, oh my God, what happened? Yeah, that's that right. is, I mean, because everything that had to happen, for that to happen, I mean, let's let's go beyond the pilots and the flight attendants, the mechanics, the baggage people, the gate. Like, let's go beyond that. Let's go back to the person, the Wright brothers, and everybody who contributed to them. <laughs> the same place, Kitty Hawk, the whole nine yards. I mean, all the things that happened to the line. And then you go back billions of years for that to happen. And I'm sitting here upset because I got a cold bowl of soup. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Like everything that needed to happen. For, for for me to be in this moment. I mean, the color of my skin, random. I mean, like like everything. That's right. Completely random. And what I found as you were as you were talking, what I was found myself uh, settling in uh, the space of is that when I accept that everything is random, it is hard to build an ego identity around that. Oh, that's so true. That's well said. That's excellent. Exactly. Yeah, because you have no control over you think that's like, right. hey, I got this way because of hard work and stuff like this. Your hard work paid about had about this much to do with it. And then it keeps you humble. And so and what it also helps me create, Rick, is uh, it, it, in, inside is a, a level of um, equanimity. You know, I just have this incredible balance mm, inside. Yeah. You know, and and I get never too high, never too low when things happen, don't happen. I don't judge them. I don't get involved in them in terms of uh, this didn't go right or this went wrong. I'm just like, oh, man, this is so random. You know, car pulls over in front of you. Random. <laughs> you know, everything is. And it's really, really hard for me to create an uh, ego identity around it. And if I have no ego identity around it and I'm able to create space for whatever occurs, I would do suffering significantly. And uh, so I really, really like this uh, idea of randomness, Rick. So thank you so much for sharing. Is there anything else you want to add to it? Because I, I just want to hear more. Well, there's a lot to randomness. I like the idea to riff a little bit more on the idea of um, your, the color of your skin, uh, the fact that you're born an American, the fact that you have functional arms and legs, you know, the fact that you have enough money in the bank to buy a cheese sandwich this afternoon. Um, those are all things that we just don't even think of as having nothing to do with randomness, but they totally are. You could have been a, a, a starving skeletal Biafran uh, crouching in some sort of a, a, a disease infected hovel in Bangladesh. You know, we don't think that way. We think that once we arrive, we're entitled and everything that doesn't go our way is sort of a mistake, you know, and it's and who, who, what the hell's going on here? Don't they, don't they know who I am? <laughs> it's almost that kind of ridiculous level. The ego um, identity. Yeah, it's ego identity. And I, I think that the, the, the big problem that people have is the taking things for granted, everything from our wives to our lives and how lucky we all are. And it can all change like that. And it usually feels like that, even though something has happened for a long time where it's built up, you've made some poor choices or you've made choices that were totally great, but the circumstances didn't work out. It feels like overnight something has happened. And it's, sometimes it is overnight, but often it's the result of our egos trying to have things a certain way. And once you give that up, it's kind of cool. Like you were talking about the bags. If you can surf what life circumstances throw at you and think in the back of your head on some level, way deep down in the walnut of your heart, that little part of your heart that's private to you, think, man, all these cool things are happening. I don't like them very well, but I can really figure out how to do it. I know how to do this stuff. And really figuring it out isn't that tough when you get your ego out of it. Your house burns down, God forbid. But if there is still life left in you, if you still have a career, if there's some insurance, there's things to build on that you can look at randomness in the eye and say, okay, I, I got it. What's next? Yeah, I absolutely love that, Rick. And I, I think about, I, I think I live my, my, my life in this way, at least I'm trying to, 
And with the acceptance of, of randomness, I mean, I could choose not to accept it. <laughs> it's still it's still present. It's still true. And there's suffering if I choose not to accept it. But all the good fortune that I have and people like Keith, you already thank me for that. Well, I'm thanking you because my gratitude <laughs> threshold is so low. And <laughs> my standards are high, but I, but but I'm just I'm just so clear of like all the things that must have have happened for this to be occurring and for you to bless me with this 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 act of love or this kindness that you're extending to me it's no small thing so i really try hard and not to take anything for granted and i think it's because i understand randomness and i think the people who are at least in my experience the people who are really gracious in that way for the most part they've had some kind of experience that caused them suffering mm -hmm. and with that suffering came a ton of humility and compassion and empathy and out of that came compassion and empathy for other people that they could extend to others and give themselves and others grace so when you embrace randomness in in my opinion it unlocks a lot of possibilities of how you can treat other human beings as well as yourself uh if you choose not to and you go ahead and think like even the thought that I would have had before we started on this journey of the practice many years ago, Rick, I I was of the mindset that no, everything is you know predetermined. Uh, it's going to go this way, and everything is certain and on solid ground. I mean, I, I could list a ton of things that prove that disprove that whole 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 uh, way of thinking. However, I never questioned it before. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, this lined up because this happened and, and this was supposed to happen and all this other stuff, giving myself way too much credit for the way things were turning out, as well as way too much blame when things didn't go a certain way and an, uh, an outcome didn't happen. So but with randomness, what I found is, as you were talking, and again, this is deepening for me very quickly in real time, what I'm finding as you were blessing me with, with that knowledge is that with the whole randomness, I feel like liberated. I feel um, more empowered, you know, about, hey, I can, you know, be a part of co connecting with other people and creating and, 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 and doing so in a kind and thoughtful way. You know, it's just, I don't know, man, it just really heightened my sense of, of, of consciousness. That, that's what it's done. It's done that for me. And, and, and I no longer feel a victim of circumstances, you know, where I don't know, man, you know, I'm, I'm kind of rambling here, but I just feel completely conscious, aware that whatever's happening in the world is is random. And when I do that, I'm humbled to be observing the randomness of it all, not getting identified with it or taking it personal, but really just letting it be. And it's a beautiful thing. That's a great way to put it, Keith. Beautiful. I can't anything more, add anything more to that. The idea of acceptance, uh, I think, with gratitude and the knowledge that you can handle whatever shows up and that there's nothing promised to anyone, even your own supreme intelligence and your supreme emotional stability and your supreme financial preparedness. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it all, um, you know, it all melts away when you're hit with a lot of things that happen. And, and at, the, at the base of it, what you need to rely on is an acceptance of what's happening and, and always be mindful of the choice that you are the one who's in control of this. You can react however you want to. You can give it the importance that you want to give it to. You don't have to rely on how other people regard its importance. It's how you look at that particular circumstance that's right for you. And the more we give up our opinions and our ego involvement about being right, and the easier it becomes for us to accept things, the, 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 the freer and lighter we, we, we feel, the freer and lighter and closer to nature and closer to other people, and I think more, more powerful personally um, than if we expect things to be a certain way and then bitch about it when they don't happen that way. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, that last part, and I'll leave, leave with this, is is I, I look back at my life and a lot of suffering that I experienced. In some of those instances, there was uh, some victimhood present. 
because I, I really didn't understand random, the randomness concept back then. But me uh, being raised in a home with a stepfather who really struggled with, you know, anger and, and alcoholism. And, and so there was some abuse uh, during that period of my life. Him being my stepfather, <laughs> completely random, man. That, that I got this, <laughs> That's right. I got this dude, you know. And, <laughs> and so, so when I don't take it personal, I'm able to 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 like, oh, okay, this is this is this is how you know this is a card I got dealt in that you know while they were de- dealing out cards, and what am what am I going to do with it? Am I going to choose to, in my personal case, everybody else, that's their path. Um, you know, to be a victim about it or can, and I was for a lot of years, I said I wasn't, but the way that I showed up and treated other people in my different relationships, I was clearly victimized by my narrative about that situation. Not that the event didn't happen, those events happen, but how I interpret them, what I do with them, that's completely up to me. And, uh, and just accepting the randomness of that, man, that would have freed me a long time ago. Hey man, you know, you, you didn't get Ward Cleaver, you know, <laughs> you <didn't- laughs> You got this dude. <laughs> so, so, and then I, once I get that, you show up at work, like, Hey, listen, you know, you got, you know, you show up at work and you know, you, you, you're expecting, you know, you got the employee of the, of the year. Nope. That's not who you got. You got this person who calls in sick all the time. <laughs> and it's like, that's not who says that's not my job. <laughs> that's who you got today. <laughs> it's just, that's, that's who you got. And so you make the best of that. But when I think that it should be a certain way and it's just not random, what happens is I start arguing against the reality of the situation. Yes, that's right. And then it just, it's all suffering from that point. <laughs> of life. Well, thank you well, so much, man. Yeah, yeah, I love the topic and we could go on all morning on it. But, you know, one thing that the viewers really, I think, can dig is the idea that when you're around people who are accepting and when you're around people who are feeling not like victims and do what they can to control things and are lighthearted in life, they're fun. It's a lot. Life is a lot easier. Did you ever notice, you know, how awful you feel after you've been with somebody who just has nothing but complaint after complaint, where tragedy is following them every moment because their expectations are that they should have no tra- uh, tragedy? Uh, anyway, the point is, I love being with you. I love being with our buddies. And I'm so glad we all have sort of the same barometer about, <laughs> about life. And it's, it's just a thrill to be in a network of guys that are like-minded. Yeah, it is, Rick. Thank you so much, man. I love you, man. I love you, Keith. Adios. Adios. Mm-hmm.